Yikes. First I make a sequel to my most popular video, and now I'm out here ranking stuff? You better stop me now before the top 10s and the icebergs come out, let me tell you. Today I'm going to be ranking all 35 missions that make up Worms 3D's single player campaign. Why am I doing that? Because I just can't stop talking about this 20 year old game I grew up with that you can't even fucking buy anymore. I, I just can't stop myself, I really can. Now, to be completely upfront, ranking all the missions in Worms 3D's campaign was honestly a pretty difficult process, just because the quality here isn't super extreme. Nothing here is truly bad enough to draw out the raw, unbridled rage of an unchained gamer, but on the other end of the spectrum, I don't think I'd call anything here incredible. Worms 3D is not the kind of game that you stay up till 4am playing, followed by staying up till 5am to cry about it. The best it gets is just pretty dang cool. Now that might sound like a bit of a backhanded compliment, but I really do enjoy Worms 3D's campaign overall. There's a little bit of jank in there, but honestly, I just find that makes it more charming than anything else. However you end up playing this game, because like I said, there's no official way of buying it anymore, I recommend giving it a shot. You can beat it in like an afternoon, and it's more good than bad for sure. It's nice. Now, as with any ranking video, I've got a million little disclaimers to go through before I say a damn thing about any of these missions. First of all, I'm only going to be talking about the 35 missions that make up Worms 3D's campaign. No tutorial missions, and no deathmatch challenges. Some of them are pretty cool in their own right, but they're just, like, different. They're not what we're going to be talking about today. Secondly, I'm going to be focusing on these missions as they appear in Worms 3D. In case you didn't know, the Worms 3D campaign is also available in Worms Ultimate Mayhem. But, unfortunately, none of these missions were changed at all to really mesh with the new physics engine. And as a result, a lot of these missions are just way more frustrating in Mayhem than they are in Worms 3D. It's unfortunate, especially since this is like the most convenient way of playing the Worms 3D campaign these days. But, it is what it is, and I'm not going to be focusing on it. Thirdly, this video is from an entirely casual perspective. I did have a phase where I tried speedrunning two individual missions from this game's campaign but I'm not really going to be taking that into account too much. However, if doing a mission as quickly as possible is not only fun, but reasonably challenging, then that will raise my opinion of it. However, if speeding through a mission as fast as possible is too easy, and you end up ignoring a lot of the potentially fun shit that you could do, that might lower my opinion of it. Maybe, potentially, if that makes sense. So that's pretty much everything. I would do the whole thing of, like, how this is just my opinion and you have to be nice to me. But I feel like if you're here, you're not seriously gonna get pressed over someone else's Worms 3D opinions, right? Like, either you just don't have any attachment to Worms 3D and you're just here to listen to me talk about anything, or you're actually as obsessed with Worms 3D as I am, and you're just happy to see other people talking about it, right? Like, you don't care where your favorite mission ends up, you're just- you're just down to see people talk about this game that people don't talk about. Like, hell yeah, let's go! So yeah, enough worming around, let's get into this. Instead of doing something like a tier list or whatever, I'm gonna do that method of ranking that, like, Schaeferless does, where, like, you just put the big number on the screen and you play a funny soundbite that foreshadows the next thing that's coming up. FUCK! Sorry for Steven, but I- I can't help it, it's just a really fun way of ranking things. He was- he was cooking when he came up with that. But anyways... Let's get into it with the worst mission in Worms 3D, in my opinion. What kind of place is this? Deciding on a definitive worst mission in Worms 3D's campaign was honestly really difficult, because a lot of the weakest missions in this game make the exact same mistake. They're gimmick missions. They look at the Worms formula of shoot the guy with the different colored name, and just kind of throw it out the window for something that might sound kind of fun, but loses all of its charm the second you actually put it in the game and beat it exactly once. I gave it a lot of thought, and I've decided that out of these missions, the absolute worst offender is the game's 25th mission, Placeholder. Placeholder is a pretty joyless experience that is just kind of completely detached from what you'd want out of a Worms mission. It is just a process of being told exactly what to do, getting the crate that gives you the thing that you can use to do exactly what you were told to do, and then doing exactly what you were told to do. Rinse and repeat that until the mission is over. Just to rub salt in the wound as well, this mission has three little unskippable cutscenes, and it's just, like, why? They're not that long, but it's just, did, did we really need this on top of everything? Basically how this mission works is you are introduced to an enemy worm who has no means of fighting back, 
and then you collect a crate which contains exactly one thing you can use to kill them. Then you get an unskippable cutscene showing you the next crate you need, you get it, you get a jetpack, unskippable cutscene, you use that to get another crate, you use that to get another crate with a girder in it, you use that to get another crate on top of the lighthouse, and then you have to use the parachute that's in that crate to find somewhere to hide from an incoming earthquake, and the earthquake reveals three more crates, two of which contain low gravities, and one of which beats the mission. And you can use the low gravity crates to get to the one you need to beat the mission. It's it's so nothing. It's so arbitrary. It's just, it is fucking rough, dude. Now, to give the mission a tiny bit of credit, the earthquake you have to hide from is a pretty unique idea. It's definitely the most unique thing about this mission, but unfortunately, the execution is just so bungled. Once you collect this crate with a parachute in it that triggers the earthquake, you have to wait over 35 seconds for the earthquake to actually start. And you don't really need to hide from the earthquake at all, because the earthquake won't push you that far and the map is pretty open. You can just stand in the middle of this island and you'll be completely fine. It's just... It's a nice idea, and it's a shame it was wasted in such a boring fashion. Now, to be fair, this mission does have a few interesting time saves. If you shoot the enemy worm from where the second crate spawns, then you can stop the first unskippable cutscene from playing and skip straight to the second one. Uh, technically, you can skip the second and third cutscene as well by switching to the weapon that the crate gives you, uh, but that causes a soft lock because your movement is locked as if you were still in the cutscene, so that's just fucking brilliant. You can also use one girder instead of two to get to the top of the lighthouse, then parachute to where the final crate spawns, and then just use the second girder to keep you safe from falling off during the earthquake. This might sound a lot more interesting than it actually is though. Like yeah, it does save time, but it's just not very fun. It just kind of feels like you're getting this process over with faster. You're not actually making it more fun. I don't know. Overall, placeholder is not offensively terrible. It's just kind of nothing, which is maybe the worst thing a mission can be. You'll beat it once, feel nothing, and if you ever happen to go back to it, your opinion of it will probably get a little bit worse each time you do. It's pretty damn rough. This is to boldly flee. To boldly go should boldly go to the trash, because I don't like it very much, and I think it's boring. This is maybe the single most forgettable mission in the entire campaign. You are on a thing, and there's a crate that you need to get on a very high up thing. You have no utilities, no weapons, nothing like that. You just jump up things to get to the crate. That's really all there is to it. There's no variation in how you go about this process. You just jump up the things to get the thing. The nicest thing I can say about this mission is that it's maybe the single shortest mission in the game, so unlike Placeholder, it at least doesn't waste your time. Unfortunately, what this mission does waste is a cool-ass idea. Because one notable thing about Too Boldly Go is that it's the only mission in the game that has water that rises in real time instead of just rising at the end of every turn. This is a really sick idea, and it's a huge shame it was wasted on a mission that's so nothing. Like, just as an example, imagine like a deathmatch mission where you have to just kill all of the enemy worms, but the water rolls like this during your turn and only your turn, right? And it would be like a deathmatch mission where you have to make a choice like, okay, do I complete my turn as fast as possible so I don't let the water get too high, or do I maybe try and get my worms to the high ground and use the water rising to my advantage to try and drown the enemy worms? Like, that would be cool as hell! But no, instead it's just kind of nothing. Like most of this mission, unfortunately. You hate to see it. <laughs> I'm in danger! I've said it before and I'll say it again. Grave Danger is the single least dangerous mission in the game. And that is not a good thing. This mission features no enemy worms, no time limit, and no mysterious third thing to fuck you over. It's just another completely nothing mission. The point of the mission is to traverse the map, collect these crates that have grenades in them, and then use them on these graves here. There are eight of them, and four of them are good, containing health crates that you need to collect to complete the mission, and four of them are bad, and if you blow them up, just bad things happen. But not bad enough to be interesting. One calls an airstrike in, one drops some mines on you, one poisons you, and one isn't even anything. It's just a hole that you could maybe fall in if you fell asleep. It's a pretty shitty grave, actually. That's, you, you, that's kind of not how graves work, I think. Again, this is a really nothing mission. There's no challenge here. There's no reward for collecting all of the crates. You only need to get three because you can drop a grenade in between these two graves here to blow up both of them. It's just completely nothing. 
At the very least, this mission does have a little secret. There's a tiny little grave behind this building here, and if you blow it up, you, like, unlock something, which is kind of neat, I guess. Overall, Grave Danger is a completely nothing mission. There's just nothing here to get excited about, and honestly, the main reason I'm ranking it above the last two missions is that unlike them, there's not any good ideas here. Like, I'm not looking at anything in Grave Danger and going, wow, that's a neat idea, I wish that was in a good mission. No, it's just well and truly inoffensive. It's a completely nothing mission, and I don't have much more to say about it. Let's move on. Ice is nice. Ice Ice Maybe is the first mission on the list to feature an enemy worm who can actually do something to you. And that's some of the highest praise I can give it, because unfortunately this mission is not all that great. This mission is pretty much just a process of getting from A to B. Your worm starts up here, and you need to get to this switch, which turns on the fridge, which freezes this pond. And then the mission just ends. It's an unremarkably fine process. Trying to do the mission in two turns is like a decent challenge, so that's like maybe kind of fun. But I don't think it's enough to move this mission up the list, really. It's just a little bit nothing. The enemy worm will throw stuff at you during their turn, and that's, again, something. But it doesn't pose that much of a threat, and you can collect these crates that give you freezes to make yourself invulnerable. So, at the cost of losing a little bit of time, you could just do that to make yourself completely safe. It is also possible to do this mission in one turn, but unfortunately, the process for doing it isn't actually very fun. It requires a really specific jump that is, like, really hard to judge, and, like, whether you get it or not is just a bit of a crapshoot. It really doesn't raise my opinion of the mission at all. So, you're probably gonna be aiming for the two-turn strat if you want to do this mission as quickly as possible. However, one thing that's a little bit of a bummer is that this mission has a bit of plot. Basically, the reason you need to freeze the pond is because the enemy worm is drowning sheep in the pond at the end of every turn. So, you need to freeze it over, so instead of drowning, they land on hard ice from a distance. I, I don't know, that's just what you're meant to do. It, it, don't, don't worry about it. At the end of every turn, you see a little cutscene of the sheep getting dunked into the water, which means that since you're probably not doing this mission in one turn, no matter how fast you go, you gotta watch a couple sheep get drowned. That fucking sucks, dude. This mission stinks. I'm sorry. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it! Moving on from the first mission on this list with an enemy worm who fights back, now we've got our first actual deathmatch-style mission, with a team of worms that you have to kill. And that is a quick fix. The mission that I got stuck on for years as a kid, I can safely say, even now, is not that great. You've got an okay selection of weapons to kill the enemy worm with, the map is quite cute and it's really fun to traverse. Honestly, the process of killing the enemy worms in this mission is pretty great. But the issue is, that's not how you beat the mission. You see, to actually complete a quick fix, you need to collect a bunch of crates that have landmines in them. And then you need to drop the landmines inside this computer to match this diagram here in this book. The only reason you kill the enemy worms in this mission is so they don't try and shoot you while you do this long-ass process, which just completely ruins the whole thing. This is a truly joyless process. It's really, really boring. I just don't really see what this adds to the mission at all. And it's a shame, because honestly, I think the mission would have been a lot better without it. To give the mission a tiny bit of credit, you're sort of rewarded for killing all of the enemy worms without losing either of your two worms. Because if you have two, you can have one worm collect all the crates and, like, read the book here, and then swap to the other one when you need to to actually place them. If you only have one, then you need to actually, like, memorize this pattern here. I, I don't know, it, it's a tiny thing, but this mission is just not that great. I might be reaching its straws here. If you keep drinking that rum of yours, you're a dead man. Do you understand me? Rum Deal is yet another mission that has absolutely nothing to do with blowing up enemy worms, but honestly, I wouldn't feel completely right calling this one a gimmick mission. It's more of just a challenge. Basically, the point of this mission is to use the jetpack to fly around and collect all these crates that are on these barrels here. However, when you get in close proximity to the barrels, a mine triggers inside them and they blow up after a little bit. So, you have to be kind of sharpish about it. It's a decent little challenge and there is a little bit of leniency. You don't have to collect every single crate, and you do have two worms, so if you lose one, you can just keep going at it with the other one instead of having to restart. That is appreciated. However, and I'm sorry I keep saying this, but overall this mission's a bit nothing. It's very short, it's very forgettable, and it's just a bit redundant as well. This game already features three designated jetpack challenges, and this is just essentially another one. Also, the jetpack controls in Worms 3D are not amazing, to put it lightly, so there is that as well. 
Like, if you're playing with other people or you're playing a deathmatch mission, you're never going to have to be that precise when you're flying around, and I think this mission is a great example as to why that's a good thing. I don't know. This mission sets out what it wants to achieve pretty well, I think. But it's just that what it wants to be is uh, not very fun. So, meh. Okay, into the eternal pit of fire you go. Surprise, surprise, we're still in the bottom 10, and we've got yet another mission where you dick about instead of blowing up the dude with the blue name. Fun. Trial of the Damned is another platforming-focused mission, and at the very least, I like this one more than Too Boldly Go or Ice Ice Maybe, although I think a big part of that is the theming. I love the aesthetic of this level. It, it, it's, it's really neat. I really fuck with this. Outside of one girder you have to place at the beginning, you pretty much just go from A to B with no tools or anything like that, and it's a perfectly fine process, there's not really anything wrong with it. It's just a perfectly inoffensive platforming mission, there's not a ton to add. The only real issues I have with this mission are, one, it's incredibly easy, and two, there's a little bit of a bullshit moment halfway through. You see, as you progress through the level, the islands that you've previously been on will sort of blow up in this little cinematic bit. It, it, it's kinda neat, but there is a bit of a catch. You see, there's a bit about halfway through the level where you have to jump to this island here with a ribcage on it, and if you don't jump far enough, this island actually gets clipped by the explosion of the previous island blowing up. So you can die for making this jump that you were supposed to make, and that feels really fucking bad. Uh, overall though, this mission's fine. It's a perfectly decent platforming mission that's carried a ton by a sick as fuck theme. Get the fuck down from there! Good news guys, we're eight missions in, and we finally got one where the point of the damn mission is to actually kill the guys with their blue names. Incredible stuff, I know. But I still don't like this mission very much. Helter Skelter is the game's 10th mission, and it's not that fun in my opinion. This is the first mission in the game that features an NPC, and he just sits on top of the Helter Skelter not doing anything and occasionally being targeted by the three enemy worms. Basically what you have to do is make your way up the tower, collect weapons as you go up, and then just kill the enemy worms. There's not much more to it than that. It's not super fun. The only weapons you're ever going to use that you can get from these crates is the bazookas, which isn't all that interesting. And the enemy worms don't pose a huge threat to you, but they can be kind of annoying in other ways. It's fairly rare, but there is a chance the enemy will target the NPC instead of you. And in, there's not really anything you can do to prevent that. If they kill the NPC, you lose the mission, and you don't get anything like a girder to potentially defend them from enemy attacks. So, that feels kind of bad. Also, the enemy worm can just blow up, like, the path up the Helter Skelter, and depending on how that goes, you might be unable to make your way up and collect more crates, which, again, feels kind of fucking bad. In practice, this mission is just super basic. You just shoot the three enemy worms with bazookas, knock them into the water, and hope nothing terrible happens. It's not the worst thing in the world, like, it's kind of satisfying to shoot these guys, I guess, but overall, definitely one of the worst deathmatch missions in the game. Not a huge fan of it. Bomb? Costa del Danger is one of the strangest missions in the game. It's very much a gimmick mission, but I don't really hate it. For a start, I love the map. This is one of the nicest maps in the game. That does quite a lot for me. I'm a huge fan of this. The point of this mission is that there are 15 landmines scattered around the island, and you're supposed to use the baseball bat to knock them away. Sometimes, but we'll come back to that. Hitting the landmines with the baseball bat is honestly really satisfying, and there's a few quite high up in the map, so there's some decent platforming here too. However, one thing about Costa del Danger I really don't care for is that, while the process of hitting the landmines with the baseball bat to get rid of them is actually quite fun, you don't gotta do that at all. You just have to get rid of them, and triggering them and letting them blow up and damage the terrain counts as getting rid of them, and that feels really wrong. In fact, there's three landmines where this seems like what you're actually supposed to do. It's really hard to get in a position where you can actually hit these, it's just way easier to jump into them and set them off and cause damage to these hotels here. That just doesn't feel right in my book. I feel like this mission would have been more interesting if, like, you had to bat the landmines away and there was no other solution. Or, at the very least, maybe you got some kind of unlockable for beating the mission without causing any damage to the terrain. Overall, this mission's pretty charming and it's a perfectly fine gimmick mission, but I don't know. 
It's a little disappointing, and it's a bit nothing, especially for one of the last missions in the game. This is the third last mission, and it's sandwiched between two of the most difficult missions in the campaign. So, it just feels a little bit out of place. I've fallen, and I can't get up! Falling for you is a bit of a tricky one, and honestly, part of me feels like I might be underrating it slightly. This mission can be split up into two parts. The first part involves using parachutes to make your way down from plane to plane, collecting other parachutes along the way. It's a little bit basic, but there's some fun to be had in trying to get as far as you can in the one turn you have available. Basically cancelling the parachute as early as possible so that you can collect the next crate and move on, but not take full damage. Then, once you land on the boat, you're given a crate with brazookas and grenades, and your job is to kill off these three enemy worms. This is a perfectly fine process. The enemy worms have incredibly low health, so killing them isn't that hard at all. Part of me wonders if this mission should be higher, because admittedly, I don't think it does a whole lot wrong. Its worst crime is just being a little bit bland. The map isn't interesting at all, the parachuting isn't very challenging or exciting, and even once you get down to the boat and you have to kill the enemy, I don't know, you're mostly just using the brazooka, maybe the grenade, this is one of the few missions where the grenade doesn't feel like total ass, so maybe, I don't know. It's just a little bit bland, but it's by no means bad. It's fine. Oh cool, a TNT box! Hook, Line and Skimmer is basically just more of the second half of Falling For You, where you're on an island far away from the enemy worms, which are on other islands, and you have to shoot them with the brazooka from a distance. Very interesting stuff. While it is pretty basic, there are quite a few things I like about this mission. The map is lovely, the vibes of it are just really, really nice. And while it is pretty much just a mission where you hit shots and not a whole lot else, actually hitting those shots is really satisfying. You see, you don't actually have to land direct hits on the enemy worms, instead you just have to hit the islands they're on, and that'll trigger a TNT barrel which blows up the entire island in a little cutscene. It's really, really satisfying, I'm a big fan of that. This mission also has a tiny bit of deviation with this worm here on the left. If you shoot the ship they're on, it won't blow up like the other islands. But, the enemy worm has much lower health to compensate, so you don't need that direct of a shot on them to kill them. I don't know, it's a small thing, but I thought that was kind of neat. That's really all there is to this mission. You hit shots, and occasionally you collect crates so you can have more things to land shots with. It's pretty basic, although the vibes are nice, it's a decent challenge, and for some reason, this enemy worm here sometimes gets really fucking confused by this rock and just throws cluster bombs at it over and over. I don't know, that's kind of funny. Like, you could argue that something wrong with the mission, but I, I, I don't know, I kind of enjoyed it, I won't lie. I am very green, but I mean... This one kills me because it was one of my favorite missions in the game as a kid, but with the power of hindsight, I'm ready to admit that Worm in the Beanstalk is just pretty okay. If Hook, Line, and Sinker was like the second half of Falling for You, but more, this is like the first half, but more. It's just a parachuting focused mission. Basically how this mission works is that you've got three turns to get all three of your worms down into this boat here, and you use a parachute to do so. However, there are also 15 targets surrounding the beanstalk, and you have to collect all of them before all three turns are up. Some of these can be a little tricky to get, so the parachuting is much more involved than it is in Falling For You, and there's a bit of fun to be had in trying to get all 15 targets with one worm in one turn. That way you can just get the other two to jump straight into the boat and save a good bit of time. That is actually quite fun, I enjoy doing that, it gets a kick out of me every time. I also have to give this mission a little bit of credit for just being an incredibly charming concept. I adored this mission as a kid, and most of that came down to like, the map itself, just, like the idea of it, and I just really like the idea of having to get the worms into the boat at the end. I don't know, that did a lot for me, I, I, I don't quite know why. At the end of the day though, this mission is a bit basic. It's a fun little parachuting challenge, but it is just a parachuting challenge. There's three of those already in the game's challenge mode, so I don't know, maybe it's a little redundant. I'm still quite fond of this mission, but I'm ready to admit that it's nothing special. Let's move in together. SAY SOMETHING! A good night's sleep is as gimmicky of a gimmick mission as you could possibly get, but fuck it, the gimmick is cute enough and well executed enough for me to not really care. It's fine. How this mission works is that the Colonel here is suffering from insomnia, and to help him with that, you need to traverse the map, collect crates that have sheep in them, and then make the sheep jump over these fences here. If you successfully do that, then he'll get slightly sleepier at the end of each turn. If you fuck up the process, or don't attempt it at all, 
Then he'll wake up a little bit at the end of each turn. If you get three successful sleepy moments in a row, you complete the mission. On top of the fact that this is just a really, really charming concept, I really do think it's fairly well executed. The fact that the Colonel will wake up on his own a little bit at the end of each turn, regardless of whether you use a sheep or not, adds a little bit of challenge because it means that you have to collect the crate with the sheep in it and use it in the same turn. And that can be a little bit tricky. The only issue I really have with this mission is the fact that the sheep is just not the most consistent thing in the world. It can occasionally just fail to make the jump through no fault of your own, and that feels pretty bad. Although, if you take a little bit of time to line the shot up perfectly straight, you should be just fine. This mission is really cute, really charming, but it's not a whole lot more than that. I honestly think it's pretty decent, though. I guess you could say it's a bit of a sleeper pick. Cool. That's weird. Apple Core Island is a bit of a strange one that I'm fond of, but I'm willing to admit has a few problems. The point of the mission is just to collect this crate up on top of the Apple Core. That's the only thing you have to do. You don't have to kill any of the enemy worms. The main issue here is actually reaching it, because it's pretty high up. What you're intended to do is collect a crate with a jetpack and use that to get up here. But you can actually beat this mission in one turn with a pretty precise jump. I'm quite fond of this strategy, but admittedly it's not super intuitive. Although you can easily two-turn this mission by just positioning one of your worms here, and then jumping off their head. So there is that. Now while I am quite fond of these strategies, and I like the map a lot, I'm willing to admit this mission has some flaws. First of all, even if you're not going for the one-turn strat, there is zero point in engaging with the enemy worms at all. They don't pose much of a threat either, because they don't have anything like brazookas. They've just got shotguns, so if you hide behind any bit of terrain, you're completely safe. Even if you just felt like killing the enemy worms for fun, your own selection of weapons is so limited that it would probably be a pretty laborious process. Overall, I'm kind of fond of this mission, but again, there's a few little issues that pop up here and there. It's fine, though. I don't dislike it at all. I'll stuff you all in the crust! Earn Your Crust is a mission that I used to think very highly of, and I have very recently decided is kind of boring and nothing special at all. Basically, it's a basic deathmatch mission with one gimmick, and the gimmick isn't very intrusive. Basically, you have to collect these three health crates behind the building here using a jetpack. You have to collect these crates to finish the mission, and if one of them gets destroyed, then you lose the mission. It's fine, it's perfectly unintrusive. I think I just kind of told myself this mission was great because it's a perfectly fine deathmatch mission with a gimmick that doesn't get in the way at all. So I was like, yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's gotta be great, surely. But I don't know, this one's a little bit boring, kind of, actually. The map is quite nice, and thanks to the abundance of oil barrels, you can get some pretty fun shots. But I think this mission is held back by just how bland the process of killing the enemy worms is. Not only are they positioned in some fairly unenviable spots and have pretty low health, but their AI is set pretty low as well, so they're not the sharpest tools in the shed. It also doesn't help that you have an incredibly boring selection of weapons available to you, and you have no way of actually collecting any more. I don't know, this mission's perfectly fine, but it's not, like, anything special. I'd rather just play a basic quick match versus the CPU than play this mission, and I feel like that's a bit of a failure on this mission's part. Overall, it's perfectly fine though. Again, I don't dislike this mission, I just kind of wish it did a little bit more. Man, I spent hours of my life stomping Koopas. All Cooped Up is a pretty strange one. It's a deathmatch challenge with a gimmick, and believe it or not, my biggest issue with this mission is that it doesn't go far enough with the gimmick. So, to set this mission up, it's a deathmatch style mission where you're at a health disadvantage. You've got three worms, they've got four, and your worms have less health than theirs. That's cool. I actually do quite like that. That's pretty fun. Where the gimmick comes into play is that the enemy aren't actually aware of your presence at the beginning of the mission, and until they are aware of your presence, they'll just skip their turn over and over again. They'll become aware of your presence if you either get too close to them, or collect a crate. And once that happens, they'll start attacking you as normal. This sounds kind of cool, but unfortunately it's just a non-factor for the most part, because you really can't do anything without attracting their attention. The only weapon you have at the beginning of the mission is a prod, which is a melee weapon. And if you get too close to the enemy, they'll just start attacking you, so that doesn't really work. What you're supposed to do is collect these crates so you'll actually have something to fight the enemy worms with. But obviously, once you collect them, they'll start attacking you. 
you just can't do anything without gaining their attention, and I think that's a real shame. I wish there was at least something you could do. Maybe if there was like a hidden shotgun crate somewhere you could collect without gaining their attention, and you could take little pot shots at them, or set off an explosive barrel that would do a bit of damage to them without gaining their attention. I don't know. I really wish this mission did something with its gimmick, because it is quite a cool idea. My biggest issue with this mission, other than the gimmick not really coming into play, is the fact that you've only got bazookas and grenades once you collect all the crates. That's a little uninteresting. It's a real shame how many missions in this game just give you bazookas and grenades and not really anything else. This game's got so many cool weapons, maybe, like, let me use them? That'd be kinda cool? I don't know? Overall though, this mission is pretty solid. It's a shame it didn't go further with a potentially cool gimmick, but it doesn't really make the mission that much worse. It's grand. Nobody Writes for Free is another gimmick mission, but it's a gimmick mission where I happen to quite like the gimmick, so we gotta give it a little bit of credit. The point of this mission is not to directly fight the enemy worms, and that's a good thing because they have over twice as much health as your worm, and their AI is set fairly high, so they're pretty good shots. Instead, you're supposed to traverse the map collecting crates that have landmines in them. Then you drop the landmines inside these ticket booths that are next to the enemy worm. You're essentially paying them, and once you've paid an enemy worm, it'll stop attacking you. To complete the mission, all you gotta do is drop a landmine into all three ticket booths. Also, unlike Costa del Danger, which should have had something like this, there is a secret unlockable on this mission for beating it without causing any property damage and blowing up any of the booths. I like that. That's fun. My main issue with this mission is that it's one of the more challenging missions in the game, but not in a way that feels very fun. It feels a little bit random and unfair sometimes. You see, some of the crates you need to get are up on the rails here, and while it's fun to traverse the map, you don't have a lot of time per turn, so once you get one of these crates, it's pretty unlikely you'll have time to retreat somewhere safe. And once the enemy's turn rolls around, most of the challenge comes from just hoping they miss their shot, because if they hit you while you're up here, it's pretty likely that you'll get launched into the water, and that just doesn't feel all that great. There is a little bit of strategy though, because once you pay an enemy worm, that enemy worm in particular won't attack you anymore. They'll just skip their turn once their turn comes around, and the turn order for the enemy worms is fixed, so you can kind of play around that at least. Overall, I think Nobody Rides for Free is pretty decent. It's a nice little gimmick mission with a very fun map, but it'll occasionally get a little bit under your skin if you happen to be unlucky. However, if you don't, then it's a good time. Overall, I quite like this one. Go ahead. Take it from me. Take My Cherry is a primarily platforming-based mission that I used to really not care for when I was younger, but I've warmed up to a lot over time. Basically, all you gotta do is get from here to this crate up on top of the ant hill, which has a homing missile inside it, and use that homing missile to kill off the enemy worm. There's also a crate with a low gravity in it near the end, and you can use that to easily make your way up to that final crate. I think the reason I like this mission so much more now is how I go about it. When I was a kid, I found this mission really frustrating, because I'd get as far as I could with one worm, and then it would be the next worm's turn, and all my progress was just kinda gone, because now I was a different worm at the beginning of the mission, and I couldn't swap to that other worm who had, like, made all the progress. So what I would do is I would start this mission by just drowning two of my own worms, and then just doing it with the third, which didn't feel great. However, my enjoyment of this mission went up a lot once I realized you can just get to the low gravity crate with the first worm, and then use it with the second worm to make this jump all the way to the anthill. I like that. That's actually kind of fun. Another thing I appreciate about this mission is that the weapon they give you to kill the enemy worm is a homing missile. In case you didn't know, the low gravity, which you'll probably still have active once you get this crate, affects how a lot of weapons feel, specifically the arc of things like the bazooka or the grenade. So giving you a weapon that automatically homes in on the opponent makes a lot of sense. That's just a smart decision. It's a very short mission, but honestly, I quite enjoy it. It's just a nice little experience, although I will say, it's not challenging at all, and if you try doing the strat that I used to do when I was younger, which is just, you know, going from A to B with no tricks, yeah, it's not very fun. Overall, this mission's pretty good. It's simple, short, and not very challenging, but depending on how you go about it, it can be a pretty good time. I like this one. I hold up a sign that says, Ghost or Shitty. When Annelids Collide is the first completely standard, no bells or whistles, no strings attached deathmatch mission that we've touched on. This mission has no gimmicks at all. You just fight enemy worms, you kill them, 
and when you kill all of them, you win the mission. That's all there is to it, and that's a good thing. Obviously this mission already deserves a little bit of credit for just, you know, focusing on what makes Worms fun in the first place, but there are a few other little things it does that I appreciate. You can do a teeny little plant forming at the start of the mission to collect this crate here that has a homing missile in it. And that's actually really smart, because one of the enemy worms is very far away, so this is a perfect opportunity to use that. Even outside of that, there's a decent variety of weapons, and the mission sort of hands you a double kill that you can get with the shotgun. That's pretty satisfying. You might argue it makes the mission a bit too easy, and admittedly this is a very easy mission, but it's only the sixth mission in the campaign, so I think you can give it a little bit of leeway there. Overall, this mission is just kinda good. It's what you would want from worms, and it's fun. There's not a whole lot to say about it, and it doesn't really do anything wrong, it's just a little bit too easy and basic to hang with some of the truly great missions in this game, in my opinion. Once I pick the perfect soy, Jack, those alien bastards are done for. In Space, No One Can Hear You Clean is a shopper mission where you fly around and collect crates to enhance your arsenal of weapons. And I think it's actually a pretty good take on the concept. Notably, you can actually get some pretty cool weapons out of these crates, including a super sheep, which is a perfect fit for a map like this. It's not like some missions that just give you bazookas and grenades and call it a day. Very much appreciated. Also, since you've got a lot of time per turn and unlimited jetpacks, you can really, like, approach this mission however you want. You can either just fly to a worm, collect the crate they happen to have and kill them off, or you can kind of focus your first turn on just getting a bunch of crates and then using your weapons as you go. You've got options, it's, it's nice. There are a few other things about this mission I enjoy. A 1v4 is a nice change of pace and you get a shotgun which allows you to attempt a pretty difficult but fairly satisfying double kill but I do have some issues with this mission overall. While it does allow for a pretty interesting mission, I do think the map for this mission is very uninteresting. It's just super bland, it's an orb with just stuff around it. It's nothing very memorable. I'm also not sure how I feel about this mission giving you infinite jetpacks. I think it would have maybe been a better fit if you had like two or three, or maybe you had to make use of some other utilities. I think having infinite jetpacks combined with the fact that the enemy are in some pretty precarious spots just sort of trivializes the mission in a way that I don't think is super fun. You don't really have to bother with collecting any weapons, you can just fly to every worm individually and prod them off. I don't know. Maybe there was a better way of going about this, but I can see the merit in having infinite jetpacks, it's hard to say. This mission isn't amazing, there's things that I think it could have done better, but overall it's a pretty good time. Tree Village Trouble is sort of an interesting blend of a shopper mission, a platforming mission, and a stealth mission, and while I don't think it really executes any of those ideas perfectly, I like this one. First of all, this map is lovely. The vibes of this place are immaculate. I'm a massive fan of that. Another aspect of this mission that I quite enjoy is that your worms are actually at a pretty huge disadvantage. They've got half the health of the enemy worms, and they've got three while you've only got two. You also don't really start with any weapons, so you have to not only navigate the level with limited tools, but collect weapons along the way too. Also, another thing I find funny about this mission is that there's a crate near your second worm that contains two prods, which is just a really funny idea. Like, imagine opening up a crate and there's nothing in it, but suddenly you know how to poke someone exactly twice. I don't, I, that's just, just a fun idea. <laughs> this mission also sort of has a focus on stealth, they kind of suggest that you should try and use the tree as, like, cover from the enemy, but unfortunately I think this idea is a bit underbaked and it doesn't really work out in practice. First of all, while the enemy worm do have the health advantage, they are at the lowest possible AI level. They are incredibly dense and they don't pose much of a threat at all. Even outside of their low intelligence and poor accuracy, outside of melee weapons, all they've got are a handful of grenades and a shotgun, so they don't have the best arsenal either. Another thing about this mission I'm a little bit mixed on is that you only get melee weapons to kill the enemy. I get why this is the case, because there are NPCs inside these huts, and like, if they die then you lose the mission, and if you had explosive weapons like bazookas and stuff, you'd be blowing up their houses and maybe potentially doing damage to them, and that'd feel kind of weird. But I don't know, the fact that you've only got melee weapons just... It sort of undermines the whole thing of like taking cover behind the tree. And it also means that it's just really, really easy to kill one enemy per turn. I don't know, maybe that could have been handled better, but I'm not sure exactly how I'd go about it. Maybe make the terrain indestructible and give you things like shotguns and Uzis, it's hard to say. Still, even with these flaws, I think Tree Village Trouble is one of the most charming missions in the game. It has problems, but man, it's just a bit of a vibe. And that's nice. 
taste like vegetables. I don't like... A leak in a vegetable patch sort of doubles as both a very basic deathmatch mission and a tutorial, which is pretty fair because it's only the fourth mission in the campaign. And I think it does a pretty decent job at both. You see, despite being so early in the campaign, you're actually outnumbered both in terms of the number of enemy worms and the amount of total health they have. Which seems like a bit much for a mission this early on, but this mission also introduces the concept of the water rising at the end of each turn, and it rises by a pretty significant amount. All of your worms start fairly close to the water, but you're given the tools to reach the high ground, and you're encouraged to knock the enemy worm down and take advantage of their lower position, either knocking them into the water, or letting the water rise and drown them on a later turn. It's honestly pretty cool, I like this concept a lot. There's quite a few other things I enjoy about this mission too. For a start, you get a great selection of weapons to use, including a holy hand grenade, which for the fourth mission in the campaign is pretty wild. This mission is also just like, conceptually brilliant in terms of map design and theming. Like yeah, it's the first mission where the water is rising each turn, and there's like, a tap that's constantly on and it's raining. I don't know, it's just a really fun idea, that does quite a lot for me. My main issue with this mission is that it's maybe just a bit too easy. I know it's only the fourth mission, but the enemy are incredibly dumb, and they'll usually just dick about and never make an effort to actually regain the high ground if you knock them off, or if they've spawned in a terrible position. And speaking of, some of these worms don't really get much chance to do anything. They just spawn in too close to the ground, and they'll drown before their turn even comes around, so I don't know, maybe that's a bit much. This mission also contains Big Lad, and it's hard to say whether that's a pro or a con, he's a bit of a wild card. You see, I think Big Lad is supposed to spawn on top of this red pot here, but something goes wrong and he actually falls into it and takes full damage. This does two things. One, it means that he never actually gets to do anything because he'll drown before his turn comes around. And secondly, it means that if you skip the introductory cutscene, the dizzy sound effect from him taking full damage plays for the entirety of the first turn, which is maybe a little bit annoying. Still, love him or hate him, Big Lad is an icon, and this mission is genuinely great. I'm a pretty big fan of it, even though it does fumble here and there. This movie isn't stupid! You're stupid! Movie Mayhem is yet another deathmatch mission with no gimmicks whatsoever. You just kill all the dudes with the blue names and you call it a day. And once again, that is mostly a good thing. For a start, unlike when annelids collide, you're actually at a slight health disadvantage here. You've both got four worms on your team, but your worms only have 75 health while the enemy have 100, and their AI intelligence is decent, so they can actually pose a decent threat. Another thing I quite like about this mission is how the lineup of weapons you have available to you is handled. You've actually got some pretty powerful stuff, but there are delays applied to certain powerful weapons, so early on in the mission you'll have to get a bit creative. Notably, you don't have access to the bazooka at the start of the mission, which is actually pretty cool considering how many missions in this game give you just a bazooka and not a whole lot else. There's some neat little things you can do here that you wouldn't find yourself doing in other missions, like dropping grenades in front of the enemy to blast them into the water, or a real personal favourite of mine, lodging a landmine in this chair so it blows up directly below the enemy worm, launching them up into the air, and then having them fall down into the hole it creates. I like that. That, that, that's fun. Overall, this is a good mission. I don't have any major problems with it at all. It's just, again, a little bit too basic to hang with some of the truly great missions in this game. It's nice. It's a good time. What's with all the balloons? Beautiful Balloon is the third and final mission with a focus on shooting things with a bazooka from far away and in my opinion, it is the best of them by a significant margin. The best thing about this mission is that there's just more to it than having to shoot things with a bazooka from far away. First of all, for a mission with such a basic premise, there's a lot of moving parts here. First of all, the water rises at the end of each turn, and the reason for this is actually really interesting. The water rising is supposed to simulate your ship running out of fuel and getting closer to the water. To combat this, you'll occasionally have to take a trip to one of the two balloons on the side to collect a crate which fuels your ship and lowers the water level. This is honestly a really cool concept. This is one of my favourite gimmicks in the campaign. I think this is fantastic. Another thing I really like about this mission is how much you get to play with despite this mission having such a simple premise. Obviously you get the bazooka, and you're meant to use that to shoot down the enemy planes. But you also get one homing missile. Hitting these planes can actually be pretty difficult, so having one homing missile is actually greatly appreciated, but obviously you only have one, so you want to save it for one plane that you're finding particularly difficult to hit. 
On top of that, you also get Cluster Bombs, a usually pretty terrible weapon that actually can potentially shine in this mission. Since any explosion causes these planes to blow up instantly, you can throw the Cluster Bomb above the planes and hope to hit more than one with the clusters. You also get a girder that you could maybe use as a shield or to position your worms closer to the enemy ships. You get a teleport that you can use to maybe put one of your worms on the enemy's planes just to kind of trivialize things once their turn comes around. I don't know, you get a lot to play with and it's really fun, especially for a mission that you'd think would be so limiting. However, I do have a few small issues with this mission. First of all, one of your worms spawns in a really bizarre spot. They spawn in on this bucket and it's just kind of strange. Like, they can't really do much down here, and they drown pretty soon if you don't collect fuel constantly. I don't really get what the idea is here. When I was younger, I thought you had to use the teleport to get them out of here, essentially wasting a turn. But you can actually just jump out, it's just pretty precise. Once I figured that out, I didn't mind this so much, but still, it's a pretty strange choice. Another issue that probably won't come up, but has happened to me exactly once and I found kind of irritating, is that... Once you kill the last enemy worm, the water rises one last time before ending the mission. And if your last worm drowns during that one last rise, then that counts as a loss. And that kind of feels like shit. I don't know, it's probably not going to happen, but I don't know, it maybe shouldn't be able to happen at all. Either way, this mission's pretty great. It takes a really simple premise and does quite a lot with it. I'm a big fan. Great Britain is a personal favourite of mine, and admittedly, there's a lot wrong with this mission conceptually, but I can't help it. I really, really enjoy this one. This is one of those missions where you're probably not supposed to be able to beat it in one turn, but you can anyways. And unlike something like Ice Ace Maybe, the process for beating this mission in one turn is both pretty doable and really fun. Despite how many enemy worms are in this mission, it really is just a platforming challenge. You just gotta get through it as fast as you can, collect this crate at the very end, and then use the jetpack you get from it to get to the vital crate and beat the mission. You don't have to interact with the enemy worms at all, which admittedly is a bit of a shame, but at the very least, the process of doing all this in one turn is really fun. There are ways of doing it even faster, but they're a bit much. Uh, maybe don't go for these if you're just trying to play through the game casually. They're, they're, they're not the most fun thing in the world to do, even if they are satisfying to eventually get. On top of that, if you find the one turn strat a bit too much, it's very, very easy to do this mission in two turns. Just use the entirety of your first turn to get to the crate with the jetpack, and simply fly to the vital crate with your second worm. Unfortunately, no matter how you go about this mission, there really is no point in interacting with the enemy worms at all, and I think that is a bit of a shame. The idea of a mission this early on in the campaign, where the enemy worms have much less health than you, but there's significantly more of them, I don't know, that's a fun idea, and it's a shame that it doesn't really get put to use in any way. It's also a real shame this mission gives you such a good lineup of weapons, because there's zero point in using any of them. Realistically, this mission's pretty flawed, but I don't know, man. The process of doing it as fast as possible is really, really fun, and I can't help it but put it this high. I'm a massive fan of this one, personally. D -D -D, that's the name you should know. Moving into the top 10, you might be surprised to see the first mission of the campaign this high up on the list, but I think D-Day is a genuinely solid introduction to this game's campaign, and it does a lot right. Functionally, it's a basic deathmatch mission, but the twist is that your worm's on the low ground, and the enemy worm have the high ground. So while they have much less health than your worms, they do have the positional advantage. This is a pretty neat concept for a first mission to introduce, and while it might seem a bit too frustrating for new players, like having to hit the opponent from down here might seem just a bit too difficult, there's actually a number of ways to go about this mission, and I really appreciate that. After four turns, a crate containing four jetpacks will spawn on the beach, and your worms can use this to very easily make their way up to the enemy. However, experienced players can just jump up the cliff, it's a little bit finicky, but you can just do this from the get-go and save yourself quite a bit of time. This almost certainly wasn't intentional, but I do genuinely appreciate what it leads to. New players can wait for the jetpack crate, and thanks to how much health they have, they're fine weathering the opponent's offense for a bit, even if they can't really hit the opponent from down here. While experienced players won't have their time wasted, they can just hop right up and stop wailing on the enemy worms right away. On top of that, you get a good selection of weapons to use, and I really, really like the theming of the map. I think it's really sick. My only real issue with this mission is that I think it's maybe a bit too easy, and that might seem like a silly complaint for the first mission of the campaign, but I don't know. Considering the tutorial missions end with a completely even 4v4, 
Your worms having five times as much health as the enemy worms does seem a bit overkill, even despite the positional disadvantage. Maybe this mission would have been more interesting if there were six enemy worms, or if they had 60 health each, or if the jetpack crate contained only two jetpacks so you'd only be able to get two of your worms up there without doing the weird trick that you may not know about if you're a new player. I don't know. Maybe it could have been a bit more interesting, but I do really appreciate this mission nonetheless. It's a great introduction to this game's campaign. Wakey wakey, wakey wakey, it's time for school! School's in for summer is yet another deathmatch mission with absolutely no gimmicks whatsoever. And once again, that is good. You get a great selection of weapons, the enemy have a health advantage, and their AI intelligence is pretty reasonable, and they're positioned in places where you can't simply knock them into the water right out the gate for the most part, which is pretty cool. Another neat little thing about this mission is that it has one of the more fun secrets in the game. If you can throw two grenades through these basketball hoops and still complete the mission, you unlock something. I forget exactly what you unlock, but you unlock something, and that's kind of fun. Overall, not a lot to say about this mission. It's just a really good deathmatch mission that doesn't have any major flaws. It's cool. Moving like Dracula, we get it back in blood. Out of all the missions in this game that you can beat in one turn that you're probably not supposed to be able to beat in one turn, High Stakes is without a doubt my favorite. The gimmick with this mission is that there's only one enemy worm, and they're incredibly weak. However, they're pretty far away, and if you kill them with anything other than a baseball bat, they'll just respawn. And the only one of your worms that has a baseball bat is the third one, who is replaced with this worm called Van Wormsing. Making your way up to this worm might seem like a really boring process, but there's actually a little bit more to it than you'd expect. You see, this map is littered with coffins, and if you get too close to any of them, they'll spawn undead zombie worms. Their health is pretty low, but there's quite a lot of them, and if you're not careful, you can spawn quite a lot of these little dudes. On top of the coffin spawning zombie worms, if you lose one of your first two worms, then they'll reincarnate as a zombie that you now have to defeat. Although if you lose Van Wormsling, then you lose the mission. He he's kind of important. Now while the casual way of doing this mission is quite fun, once it's Van Wormsling's turn, you can just reach Dracula Worm and kill him off in one turn, and the process for doing so is really quite fun. It requires a pretty specific jump and a parachute at the beginning, and then you've got to do some pretty specific platforming to reach Dracula Worm without summoning any of the zombie worms. It's really quite fun, I enjoy it a lot. My only real issues with this mission are that if you're going for the one turn strat, the first two worms don't really do anything. You've just got to skip their turns, you can't kill them off because that'll spawn zombie worms you have to kill. So personally I just like to position them here to make this jump at the beginning a bit easier for Van Wormsing. Another small issue with this mission is that if you're going for the one turn strat, this is the only one turn strat where RNG can be a factor, because you need to use the parachute at the beginning of Van Wormsing's turn, and if the wind is blowing too strong in the wrong direction, then you're just kind of stuck. And since you have to wait till Van Wormsing's turn, you can't just start the mission, see that the wind is going the wrong direction, and restart. No, you have to skip the first two turns and then hope that the wind cooperates on Van Wormsing's turn. It's not a big deal, but I don't know, it can be a little potentially frustrating. Overall though, this mission's really fun. Whether you're doing the one turn strat or doing it casually, I'm a big fan of this one. It's just great. Correct. Showdown at the OK Coral Reef is pretty damn good. It's a deathmatch mission with a pretty good secondary objective. All you gotta do is kill off all the enemy worms and collect this crate at the end of the map. It's a very simple premise for a mission, but I think it's executed extremely well. I really like the map, it's quite compact, there's a lot of places to hide, and that's good because you don't get a lot of time per turn. The enemy pose a decent threat, and not only do you get a good selection of weapons to work with, but you can actually get more from this secret crate on top of this building, and the vital crate. A super sheep and a concrete donkey respectively. Getting a concrete donkey is a huge selling point for this mission. It's arguably the single most powerful weapon in the entire game, and it's the only time it appears in the entire campaign. So. That's a pretty cool thing to see. And speaking of that secret crate, collecting that is pretty fun too. You gotta make your way to the top of this building, which considering you don't have a huge amount of time per turn, is actually a decent little challenge, and you are appropriately rewarded for it by getting a super sheep. Overall, this is just a really strong deathmatch mission. It's not groundbreaking or anything, but it achieves what it sets out to do really well, and I don't think it has any major flaws. Great mission. Hold it right there, man. I'll be taking that. <laughs> Hold Until Relieved is the longest mission in the game. So thank fuck it's a good one. <laughs> this mission has a really unique wing condition. You don't actually have to kill off the enemy worms. What you have to do is position your worms on four different control points throughout the map. So you're not really aiming to kill the enemy, but get them out of the way, 
remove them from these points and try to keep them as far away from the points as possible so that they don't knock you off. You get a good selection of weapons and utilities, and interestingly, this is the only mission in the entire campaign where you have a full team of six worms. So, that's nice. It's, it's cool to see everybody here, right? Like, you, you made that team. You put six worms on it. You know, worm five and six deserve to get a little bit of time to shine. They're, you know, they're important too. Even if you kill off the enemy worms, then more will spawn in. But alongside that, health crates will occasionally spawn in too. So, that not only helps keep things interesting, but helps keep your worms healthy from a repeated beating. Because you have to be on the control point, you can't really hide away from the enemy's attacks, so this is actually a really nice consideration. The only real issue I can think of with this mission is the enemy knocking you off of the control point, and therefore wasting your time. But this isn't a huge issue, and you've got a lot of ways of playing around it. You've got jetpacks, and you've also got infinite worm selects, so if one of your worms gets knocked off a control point, no matter which worm's turn is up next, you can just swap to the worm that got knocked off and put them right back. It's not a huge deal. Overall, very unique mission, very fun mission, and a great addition to this game's campaign. Suck. 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 If I went back in time and showed this video to 8 year old me, they would be mad as fuck that this mission made the top 5, but I can't help it. Alien Juice Suckers is a fantastic mission. It's yet another basic deathmatch mission with no gimmicks, but it's how it goes about that that I find really cool. This mission is a 4v6, and not only do the enemy worm have a health advantage, but they've also got the positional advantage. A lot of them are on the high ground, while all four of your worms are stuck down below, so you gotta work around that somehow, and the ways that you do that are actually pretty fun. You don't get anything like a jetpack right out the gate to just, you know, get yourself out of a sticky situation at no cost. Instead, you've got to do some tricky platforming, make use of some other utilities in creative ways like the parachute or the ninja rope, or use the teleport. This is the only mission in the game where I felt like actually compelled to use the teleport. Like I actually felt like giving up my turn was worth a positional advantage. This mission does feature a jetpack, but it's not in your inventory by default. It's in a faraway crate, so that's another decision you have to make. That's pretty cool. There's also two other crates with a super sheep and a banana bomb, so I don't know, that's pretty tempting. Even ignoring those crates, you've got a pretty decent selection of weapons, the enemy pose a decent challenge. Overall, this is a really, really strong deathmatch mission. But there is one issue I have with it, and this is the reason I despised this mission so much as a kid. While this mission is great in its own right, it is also the last mission in the campaign. And as a finale, it's really anticlimactic. There's no cool gimmick or anything like that, which would have actually kind of made sense for a final mission. And once you beat this mission, there's no ending or celebration at all. You just beat it, get booted back to the campaign menu, and that's it. It's over. As a kid who took years to beat the campaign, this fucking sucked. It felt awful to finally finish everything and just be met with nothing. But now, not only am I kind of over it, but I do realize that's less of an issue with this mission and more the campaign's design as a whole. Still, I do think it's a slightly anticlimactic ending, like, the map itself isn't super interesting, it doesn't feel very final, but overall, ignoring that, this is a good-ass mission. This game. When I first started putting this ranking together, I was pretty certain that this mission was going to be my definitive number two pick. So, while I feel a little bad that it slipped off a little bit, I cannot stress enough how I wish more missions in this game were like Shiver Me Timbers. Shiver Me Timbers is a very dynamic mission. It is essentially a deathmatch mission, but there's a lot of little moving parts and a lot of little tasks that need to be done, and they all work together really nicely. I think it's really fun. Basically, there are two things you need to do to complete this mission. One, you need to kill off all the enemy worms, and two, you need to get the captain worm back to the ship. Killing off the enemy worms is a very simple process. You don't start the mission with much at all, just prods and a fire punch, but you can collect crates that give you bazookas and grenades. Not a very fun selection, but hey, it gets the job done. The second part of the mission is where things get really interesting in my opinion. See, you've got multiple ways of going about the process of getting the captain back to the mainland and then back to the ship once you've killed off all the enemy worms. There are three utility crates around the map that each contain a girder. You only need one girder to get the captain back to the mainland, but there is an incentive to collect all the crates. Using a girder uses up your turn, but if you collect all three girder crates, then a fourth utility crate will spawn, which has a jetpack, 
which the captain can use without using up your turn. On top of that, it is a little risky, but the captain can just jump back to the mainland. Again, it's tricky, so you might not be willing to risk this if you're a new player, but if you're experienced, this saves you a little bit of time. You know, we like options. This is cool and fun. Another thing I really appreciate about this mission is that, unlike something like Helter Skelter, the enemy worm won't target the captain while he's on the rocks, and thank fuck for that, because he would be very vulnerable, and losing the mission before his turn even comes around would just be a huge pain in the ass. Overall, this mission can be a little bit simple in places. Like I said, you don't have a huge variety of weapons, and while it's fun to think about things like the girders and the jetpack, yeah, you can just get the captain to jump back to the mainland and jump back to the ship. It can be a little bit basic depending on how you go about it. But still, despite that, I think this mission is incredibly charming. I love all the little moving parts it has, and while I am a little disappointed that it's so basic, a lot of that comes from its ideas being so good that I just wish they could be utilized in other places in the game. I wish there were more missions like this, maybe more challenging ones. Ones where maybe you can't just jump back and you have to collect multiple different things to get someone back to something. I don't know. It's a really, really fun mission conceptually, and even in practice, while it can be a little basic, I think it's absolutely brilliant. Crop Circle is, in my opinion, the most well-executed shopping mission in the game. You've got two worms, the enemy has four, even though they've slightly less health than yours, and you don't have shit to deal with them. As with other shopper missions, you need to collect crates to get weapons to kill the enemy with, but they spawn in a sort of fixed trail. There's a sort of, like, path that you can follow around the map, and you just collect crates as you go, and then once you get back where you started, you can just keep looping it to get more and more crates. It's kind of fun. How I usually go about this process is I'll have one worm go on a little pilgrimage around the map collecting crates, and then have the other worm stay near the enemy, so that they can actually make use of the weapons that the other worm has collected. It's a really fun concept, and I think it works out really well in practice. Another cool thing about this mission is that you'll also collect a couple utilities alongside the weapons as you make your way around the map. I think these are mostly intended to be used by the worm that's, you know, going around collecting crates so that they can, like, make their journey a little bit easier, but you can save some and have the other worm use them. For example, you can use a girder to get up to the enemy spaceship and kill the enemy worm while you're up there, knocking them down to the ground below, where they'll have very little health after taking full damage. Another strat you can do is plant yourself directly below the enemy ship and try and blow the ground out from underneath them, either knocking them into the water or, again, having them fall down to the ground below and take significant full damage. It's a really fun process no matter how you go about it, and honestly, this mission is decently challenging too. The enemy worm have a decent selection of weapons, and again, they've got more total health than you, so it's kind of fun. And, unlike literally the last mission we talked about, while it is a shopper mission, you actually get some cool shit from the crates you're collecting, like a dynamite or a banana bomb. It's fun, it's not just Brazooka and Grenade City, you love to see it. My only real issue with this mission is that it becomes significantly less fun if you lose one of your worms, because then you have to try and balance killing the enemy worms and collecting more weapons if you don't have enough. But I don't know, that's not really a huge issue. Like, if you lose one of your worms, that is your fault, so... I don't know, maybe it's a little silly to bring up at all. Overall, fantastic mission. Very happy putting it in the top three. Breakfast time! Beefcake Breakfast Brawl is one of the game's most challenging missions, and this time I mean that in an entirely good way, because this mission's fucking awesome. Like Crop Circle, this is another shopper mission, and while I don't think that aspect of the mission is quite as good as Crop Circle, there's other things about this mission that I really, really enjoy. It's a 2v4, and the enemy worms actually do pose a significant threat in this mission. They're pretty smart, they've got a good arsenal, and not only is traversing the map pretty tricky, so finding cover is difficult, but you don't get a lot of time per turn. So, trying to progress through the mission, collect crates, do damage, and hide, it's quite a lot to balance, it can genuinely be pretty tricky. Honestly, part of me is a little conflicted putting this mission this high, because I don't have a whole lot more to say, really. I don't have any issues with this mission, and... Really, what you want to do is pretty simple. You just got to traverse the map, collect stuff, kill off the enemy. It's just that doing that is really fun, challenging, and thoughtful, right? Like, you're doing a lot of things in this mission that you wouldn't really be thinking about in other missions. I'm thinking about, like, the order that I do stuff. Like, okay, let's get this crate, kill off that worm. You know, a lot of missions in Worm 3D, you don't really have to think about it. You just walk up to the enemy worm, knock them into the water, end off. 
you kind of can't knock the enemy worm into the water in this mission. You actually have to kill them off via damage and maybe full damage by knocking them down from a high place. It's really cool. I think a big part of what makes this mission work is the fact that there's no open water for you to knock them into right off the bat. I mean, obviously the, the, the floor is water, but it's very shallow. They don't drown right away, so d d don't worry about that. It means that, unlike a lot of missions in Worms 3D, you can't just instantly get rid of any enemy worm that's a little close to the water. They're always a threat. They'll usually survive with like 30 or 40 health, no matter what you do to them. And I think that's great. However, while you can't immediately knock the enemy into the water, after four minutes, the water begins to rise at the end of each turn. And I think that leads to some really cool stuff. For example, if during those four minutes, you can manage to knock all four enemy worms down to the floor, the very next turn, all four will instantly drown and you'll win the mission. I love that. That's super satisfying to pull off. And it's the fastest you probably are going to do this mission. So, I don't know. I, I really enjoy doing that. But still, even if you do that and get the quad kill, you have to survive in this mission for four minutes. Which is actually decently challenging. Again, this is one of the most difficult missions in the campaign, and I really do love it for that. It's just a really solid mission that provides a really solid challenge, and it's got a fun, unique twist in that, at least at the beginning, there's no open water for you to instantly knock the enemy worms into. Overall, a genuinely fantastic mission, but not quite the best overall. I'm drinking Rollin' Rock on the Rollin' Rocker. I mentioned earlier that Shiver Me Timbers was originally going to be my number two pick for this list, and over the course of just, you know, working on my ranking and considering other missions and such, it ended up dropping to number four. And I don't feel bad about that. Like, it, it happens, whatever. However, I knew from the very beginning what my number one pick for the absolute best mission in Worms 3D was gonna be, and it hasn't moved an inch. My favorite mission in Worms 3D is without a shadow of a doubt, Ragnarok and Roll. Ragnarok and Roll is the game's penultimate mission, and shit dude, it should have maybe been the ultimate ultimate mission, because this would have been a phenomenal note to go out on. To beat this mission, all you gotta do is kill off all the enemy worms, and that might seem like a pretty simple process, because they've all only got 40 health each. However, what sets this mission apart from other deathmatch missions is that this is a 1v7, so you've got to be really careful in how you deal with the enemy worms, especially since you've only got 75 health. Any chip damage that you take from a stray cluster bomb or anything like that is going to add up pretty fast, and this mission only has one small health crate. Most of the weapons that you use in this mission are going to come from crates that you pick up as you make your way through the level, but the weapons you get from these crates actually feel really well thought out. You get shotguns, which you can use to potentially kill two worms in one turn. But you only get two of them, which is fair because killing two worms in one turn is very rewarding. You get grenades, which are usually not the most fun thing in the world. But if you drop one right in front of an enemy worm, it'll usually do around exactly 40 damage. So that's perfect. Near the very end of the mission, you get a jetpack, which makes perfect sense because you can use that to get right back up to the top and finish off any enemy worms that you left alive rather than just trying to hit them from a distance. Everything about this mission feels so well thought out and it provides a really, really solid challenge. I did things while playing this mission that would usually never come to mind while playing any other mission in Worms 3D. I'll end up doing things like manipulating the AI to put themselves in precarious positions that set up double kills with a shotgun, intentionally setting off landmines to finish off enemy worms without committing to a shotgun or using a turn, or to just blow up holes in the terrain that I can knock enemy worms into, or even intentionally leaving an enemy worm earlier in the mission alive so that after killing one of the two enemy worms in the boat at the very end, the next enemy turn will be that of the enemy worm earlier in the mission, who is very far away from me, and not the other enemy worm in the boat, who is right next to me and poses much more of a threat. Overall, everything about this mission is phenomenal. Everything comes together so brilliantly. It's a genuinely decent challenge, and overcoming it feels really satisfying. And on top of that, of course, it's one of the nicest looking maps in the game. I absolutely love the aesthetic of this. It's truly brilliant. Ragnarok and Roll is, in my opinion, the only well and truly exceptional mission in Worms 3D's campaign. And honestly, it's one of the absolute best things in the game in general. I think experiencing Worms 3D's campaign just for this mission alone is absolutely worth it. It's really something else. So there you go. I ranked every mission in Worms 3D, uh, in my opinion. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Uh... Chances are you've done neither, because you either haven't played this game, or you played it when you were like, six, like me. So, yeah.
Uh, but if you have played it recently, and you actually do have Worm 3D opinions, and they're different, uh, let me know. That would be fun to hear about. I love this game to bit, so just hearing more about it from people would be very cool. I hope you enjoyed. Bye.